Chapter 2, verse 56. One who is not disturbed in mind, even amidst the threefold miseries, or elated when there is happiness, who is free from attachment, fear, and anger, is called a sage of steady mind. So, Prabhupada has described that a fully conscious person, this is in the purport, is not at all disturbed by the onslaughts of the threefold miseries, for he accepts all miseries as the mercy of the Lord, thinking himself only worthy of more trouble due to his past misdeeds, and he sees that his miseries by the grace of the Lord are minimized to the lowest. Similarly, when he is happy, he gives credit to the Lord, thinking himself unworthy of the happiness. He realizes that it is due only to the Lord's grace that he is in such a comfortable condition and able to render better service to the Lord. And for the service of the Lord, he is always daring and active and is not influenced by attachment or aversion. Yaki Panta Maham one day, see Guru Tintarinam. O Makana Tivaranda Sagananjara Shakaya. Chakshuri Viditam Yaina, the Smashi Guru. So, in the material world, if some distress comes to you, people say, Why? Is this happening to me? Why is God so unkind, unjust? Why is he giving me this trouble? And if something good happens, we say, yes, it is my intelligence. It is my good work. It is, I am so great. So the devotee has a different attitude towards happiness and distress. The devotee thinks if distress comes, wow, this is the Lord's mercy. I should have, I deserve much worse. But I only got a little token of what I deserve. And when happiness comes, he says, oh, thank you, Krishna. Now I can use what you have given me to, to glorify you, to please you. So such a different attitude. So Srila Prabhupada has said that it is all in our mind, actually, this happiness and the stress. It comes and goes, and we have to tolerate it. But sometimes, as devotees, we see a gap between our knowledge, what we know, what we've heard from the scriptures, and our experience, our reality, how we can apply that knowledge. Sometimes there's a gap there. Uh, we know the philosophy but it's hard to realize it when the miseries do come, when the difficulties do come. So uh, devotees would bring this up to Srila Prabhupada, uh, ask him questions. That, uh, you know, I feel the devotee says, uh, I feel affected by the homes of nature sometimes. So, you know, uh, my body seems to be affected. And Prabhupada says, no, you are not experiencing. Your body is experiencing. You are feeling cold due to this body. You are not feeling cold. The devotee said, but I think I'm feeling cold. <laughs> and so Prabhupada said, you are thinking. That is illusion. The devotee said, so I should rise above that. The Prabhupada said, yes, but not artificially. But this is the fact. You have to gradually rise to that level, that platform. Just like when you are feverish. Actually, you're a healthy person, but now the fever has come. So in this feverish condition, you're thinking, oh, I'm feverish, I have a fever. But this fever will not stay. 
You will come to the healthy stage again. So don't be disturbed by this feverish condition. Go on with your duty. Don't misidentify, oh, I've become feverish. Everything is finished. No, that is external. It has come, it will go. As Gita says, Mantra Sparishas Kuntea, Shitosha, Sukadukusa. That happiness and distress is like winter and summer seasons. It comes and it goes. And we have to learn to tolerate it. So Shri Prabhupada one time was very, very sick. He had fever. He had diarrhea. He was in the bed tossing and turning for three days. So his servant was a little bit um, afraid to ask him if, if he was suffering. So he asked a different question. He asked Prabhupada, does a pure devotee suffer? And Prabhupada said, no. It was a lover's bite. So he saw the hand of Krishna. He saw, OK, Krishna's biting me. That's why I'm feeling fever. He saw it in a different, he had a Vaikuntha attitude. So Krishna came to relieve our distress, our threefold miseries. So therefore, we depend on Krishna and we tolerate. So now I'd like to discuss the threefold miseries and how to counteract them. Srimad Bhagavatam, seventh canto, instructions about civilized human beings is described how to counteract each of the threefold miseries. So what are the threefold miseries? Adi Bautic, due to other living beings. Adi Daivik, due to the demigods or nature. And Adi Yatmik, due to our mind and our own body. So how to counteract Adi Bautic miseries due to other living entities? By good behavior and freedom from envy. We can counteract sufferings due to other living entities. How to counteract sufferings due to providence or the demigods or the nature? Hot, too hot, too cold, flooding, drought. By meditation and trance. How to counteract sufferings due to our own body and mind? That is by practicing pranayama and hatha yoga. So this is the advice given in Bhagavad and Srimad Bhagavatam. So Adi, first of all, we'll discuss Shadi Daivik, that is from nature. How to counteract these miseries? Meditation and trance. So we meditate on Krishna, we chant Hare Krishna. Uh, but in India, there are also saintly persons who do meditate on Shiva, there is one example of one saintly person in Kedarnath, the place of Lord Shiva in the Himalayas. There was a devastation in 2013. There was huge floods, huge avalanches at, right at that temple. Why did it happen? Because the government of India decided to move Parvati's temple above Lord Shiva's temple. And the night before the move, Parvati came in a dream to the Pujari and said, don't move me. Tell them not to move me. So they moved her, and a huge devastation came at, at Kedranath, the place of Lord Shiva. But a big stone came and stopped right in back of the temple and pr protected the whole temple from the devastation. But everything on both sides was destroyed. <coughs> All the food stalls, the hotels, <coughs> was destroyed. So during the devastation, the saintly person was standing in meditation, trance, meditating on Lord Shiva, and nothing happened to him. He was saved. On both, all sides of him, rocks were falling. 
<coughs> water was coming, floods were coming. He was unharmed. And so meditation and trance can protect you from the misery of Adi diving or due to providence, due to nature, due to demigods. And there were many people, it was in the summertime during pilgrimage time, there were many, many people up there stranded because the roads were destroyed. So they couldn't get down. Usually people drive up there. So what happened, the government sent some helicopters to evacuate the people. And it was the turn of the saintly person to get on the helicopter. And they said, okay now, Swamiji, you go on the helicopter. He refused. He said, no, I will walk. So he was completely untouched. He was unfazed by this devastation that was happening. Why? Because he was meditating in trance. So of course, we meditate on Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna saves us from all danger. So chanting the holy name, this is the best way. Uh, one time Indra Maharaj was in danger in an airplane. The airplane was flying uh, in South Africa from one place to another. And, every, and the, when the plane would come down to land, there was a huge violent wind and the plane would start to shake and the, pl the pilot couldn't land the plane. He was aborting the landing. So the first time that happened, Maharaj Maj was shouting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And the Christians were going, Jesus, Jesus. And the Muslims were going, Allah, Allah. But next to Maharaj was sitting one man, a scientist. He said, Swamiji, I do not believe in this, calling the names of God. I believe in science, technology. So the plane went down again. It started shaking violently. Couldn't land, went back up. And, and the scientist said to Indra what, what were those words you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> And Mara said, Hare Krishna. He said, no, the whole thing, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he learned the Maha Mantra. The pilot said, okay, we're going to try one more time. If it doesn't work, we're going to go back to where we came from. So the pilot tried to land. Everybody was chanting. The scientist was also chanting. And the plane landed safely. <laughs> So Maharaj said, now do you believe? And the scientist said, maybe. <laughs> so Maharaj said, here's my card. If you have any questions, you can call me. So yes, if we meditate in trance, we meditate on Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we will be saved from natural calamities. We will be protected. Now the second type, we talked about Adi Daivik, now there's Adi Bhautik, sufferings due to other living beings. How to counteract this? By good behavior and freedom from envy. So how, what that means is if there is someone senior to you, then you should respect and serve that person. If there is someone equal, you should make friendship. If someone is junior, to you, you should be merciful and give them spiritual knowledge. Help them, give them prasad, give them Hare Krishna mantra. So, sometimes even in our movement there are problems with relationships. One time one devotee wrote to Prabhupada, I have a problem with relationship. Devotees, sometimes I feel they're a bit impersonal Prabhupada said, no, actually, because devotees are persons, there will be some lacking also. But the difference is, because they've given up everything to serve Krishna, their lackings have become transcendental, because they do their topmost intention is to serve Krishna. And so there was in Juhu Bombay, we, we, I lived in Bombay in that temple for a couple of weeks, extreme austerity. 
1972, when we came uh, from the airplane to Juhu Bombay, that night a robber had come and stealing, stolen all the jewelry from the deities because the deities were not in any uh, room, they were just in a tent. And the devotee who was guarding them was asleep. So they just came in, took the flute, took the crowns, and left. So the deities were living in very austere conditions, and so were we. Uh, the men were in a hut, a, a straw hut, full of rats. I know the first day I came, there was also the prasadam room, the hut. And uh, I was looking up at the ceiling, and there were these huge rats running back and forth. And I was thinking, oh my God, I hope it doesn't fall in my plate. <laughs> and it fell in someone else's plate. <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> I shouldn't have been, but I know I, I should have not been happy. Um, but I, it was my first day in India. And it was enough culture shock to not have, at least the rat didn't fall in my plate. Um, and water, drinking water, there was no bisleri, no bottled water. We had one clay pot with a top. You take out the pot and all these bugs would fly out. <laughs> and we had to drink it. And we were sick within a few days. You get a urine infection. It was very austere conditions in the early days. That was, and I remember Krishna book reading. We would have a glass of milk and we would pick out all the bugs and make sure there were no bugs in our milk before we would drink it. So very austere conditions. And uh, so one Dr. Patel, Prabhupada used to go on a morning walk with one Dr. Patel. The doctor felt a bit of compassion for the devotees. So he donated some mattresses, some pillows, mosquito nets, blankets. And uh, he gave them to devotees, but then within two years, everything was missing. Everything was gone. Devotees just somehow couldn't keep it. And Dr. Patel, he was into impersonal liberation. He really wanted to get liberation. So Prabhupada, he, he went and complained to Prabhupada. He said, you know, these devotees, they, uh, they, I gave, I donated all these things and they don't care. They just lost everything. So Prabhupada said, these devotees do not care if they have to sleep on the floor they do not care if they get disease or do not have proper facilities. That liberation which you so much desire, they already have it. The Prophet said we were liberated. But anyway, you have to be to stay in India <laughs> in the 70s. Yeah, we were sleeping on the floor just on a straw mat. I remember I slept on the floor for 18 years on that straw mat, on a straw mat. Um, it was an adventure, but... Uh, bit of austerity was there. And so Adi, Adi Bautic, miseries due to other living entities, we counteract by good behavior and freedom from envy. Then the last one, Adi Atmik, our body and mind, Hatha Yoga and Pranayam. Prabhupada said, as far as Pranayama is concerned, that means breath control, chanting of the holy name, of the Lord and dancing in ecstasy are also considered pranayama. So when you chant and dance, you will get a chance after this lecture. And then that is pranayama, and that is good for body and mind. So I'll read here a little bit from Bhagavad Gita again about balance. Krishna says in chapter 6, verse... 17. Yukta hara vihara sa yukta shestas karmashu yukta sap navabodha sa yoga bhavati dukaha. He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. So this is the challenge of our life. This is what it means to practice bhakti yoga, that there is a balance. Balance means mode of goodness. The modes of material nature are balanced. Sri Prabhupada has explained there are three causes of disease. Overeating, anxiety, and uncleanliness. 
Overeating, anxiety, and uncleanliness can cause disease, or do cause disease. We know that. Stress is a very big problem nowadays in modern society, and people are sick because of anxiety. Uh, the subtle uh, influences the gross. Overeating, now undereating also, anorexia is also a problem in modern society, overeating and undereating. And so how does devotee, um, what's his attitude? The attitude of devotee is hope against hope that the mercy of Krishna will come to me. And so he's always seeing everything that happens to him as Krishna's mercy. And then he tolerates, he tolerates all the difficulties that come to him, thinking, oh, Krishna has reduced my suffering. I should have had much more, but he has reduced it. And that is the attitude of the devotee. Prabhupada, he, when he first went to America, he had no money. He was walking the streets, saving money. He had two heart attacks on the way to America. He had his first room, there were no windows, no bathroom. And, uh, but he tolerated, and good thing he did, because then here we are today. So you have to tolerate, you have to hope for mercy, and you have to serve, do some service with body, mind, and words. And if you do these three things, then you are eligible for liberation. You're eligible to go back to home, back to Godhead. So sometimes you may wonder, why is it that Difficulties come to devotees. Uh, it is said by one of our acharyas that it is at night that the sunrise becomes attractive. During hot summer months, cold water gives comfort. During cold winter months, warm water is pleasing. Lamplight appears attractive in darkness. And when one is distressed by hunger, food tastes especially good. So, in other words, to strengthen his devotee's mood of dependence on him and longing for him, the Lord arranges for his devotees to go through some suffering, and when he appears to deliver them, their gratitude and pleasure are boundless. So still, we may wonder, you know, one devotee asks Prabhupada, you know, I read your books, but I'm a little confused. You say when you become a devotee, you're on the transcendental platform. But at the same time, you talk about being affected by the modes of nature. I'm a devotee, I'm practicing the devotional principles, and I get some pleasure, but at the same time, I feel affected by the modes of material nature. How can I be transcendental and still be affected by the modes? Srila Prabhupada said, it's just like being on a boat. Have, how many of you have been on a boat here? Yeah, most, everybody, so you know what it means to be on a boat. You're on the boat, but sometimes big waves will come and rock the boat. So those waves are the modes of material nature. And the boat is the transcendental platform. You're on the transcendental platform. Sometimes the waves of material nature rock the boat, so our position may not be steady. How will you become steady? For that, you have to learn from the captain of the boat, the spiritual master, how to steer the boat. If you learn expertly, your position on the boat will be steady even in the greatest storm. Similarly, on the transcendental platform, if you learn from the spiritual master how to steer the boat of transcendence through the ocean of material life, you'll become steady even in the greatest storm of the modes of material nature. So we have to take Prabhupada's instructions to heart, hope against hope for the mercy of Krishna, see everything as Krishna's mercy, and then at the end we will go back home, back to Godhead. So I will stop here. We have time for questions. If anybody has any questions, you can ask at this point. Yes? Can you say maybe a few words about um, how to get uh, this freedom of envy? How to be free from envy? Well, we, we are envious when we see somebody who has something that we want, but 
um, we don't have. And so we should, uh, when we see others, we should see with the vision of Krishna. We see everyone equally, see how Krishna is in their heart. And we should offer obeisances to that person. If you want to get free from envy, then offer obeisances to the soul in the heart, the super soul in the heart, mentally. Not that you have to get down every time and offer obeisance, but offer obeisances, do, uh, send some well-wishing to that person, uh, blessings, send some good thoughts. And that will be very helpful to be free from envy. Because it's, it's in the material world, it's, it's a competition. We feel there's a competition. Actually, every, there, everything is already provided for us, according to our, our conditioning. And, uh, and as devotees, when you surrender to Krishna, we get more than we deserve. We don't get what we deserve, according to our karma. Once you take up chanting Hare Krishna, then you get the blessings of Krishna. You get so much more than what you actually deserve. So it's good to have gratefulness also. It's another way to get free from envy. Say, thank you, Krishna. Be grateful for what you have, and then you won't envy what you don't have, what you think you don't have. OK. Any other questions? Thank you very much. I would like to ask you uh, how to behave in the situation when we are disturbed by behavior of other persons if they, um, for example, argue with us or make something against us. How do we um, react? How do we respond to people who are doing things against us. Yeah. So where there is anger, where there is envy, we must respond with love, with kindness. Somehow uh, send good thoughts. And if, if you actually pray, you don't have to do it on the on this gross level, but on the subtle level, if you pray for that person, the good thoughts will come and the heart will change. Uh, on the subtle, it starts from subtle to gross. If you respond in the same way, you're making karma. If you respond anger with anger, then you are making karma. It's described in Mahabharat that if someone is angry with you and you don't respond, you will get all his good qualities and he will get all your bad qualities. <laughs> That's from Mahabharat teachings of Bhishma Dev. So, it's uh, if you respond in, with anger, if you lose your control, you, you're making karma. Again, you, the, the thing will happen again. Again, you, will, you will, may have to come back next life to fight with a person. But we want to finish everything in this life. And so we have our free will, how to respond. The karma comes, that is from our previous life. But we have the free will, how to respond to that karma. And so the person who is, is disturbing us, he is uh, just the instrument of our karma. And it, another way to look at it is Krishna is testing us. Krishna is testing us. How will we respond? What will we do? Uh, we will, and, and if you respond in a negative way, then chances are it will stay in your mind. And then your mind will be disturbed. And so we cannot allow others to disturb our spiritual path. We must have, we must respond with, with, uh, without envy, with good behavior. Try to pacify that person with your good behavior. With your, they, then they cannot, what can they say? How can, what can they respond if you be, behave in a um, goodness way? Uh, show them. I can give you an example. One devotee was on book distribution recently, and he was taught, he was had a Bhagavad Gita, and he was showing it to a Muslim, and the Muslim was very angry. He said, "Oh, don't show me this. I'm a Muslim. 
I have my own religion. It's the best. And so that, and he, and the, and the man was very angry and very disturbing. So the devotee said, "Oh, I love your religion. Just see on my phone. I have your one of your songs." And he played his phone, and, and it was a beautiful Muslim song. And the Muslim started crying. He said, oh, you have taken so much trouble to understand my culture. I will also try to understand your culture. Give me that. I will buy that Gita from you. <laughs> so that's one example of responding with love to, to envy. Uh, the man was envious. He was completely envious, and the devotee changed his heart by his good behavior. Uh, so this is, this is happening. I just saw a picture of Indraduna Maharaj in Woodstock. Some Christian priests and nuns came to visit him, and he was saying, oh, I respect Lord Jesus so much, and it ended up with the, the, this old Christian nun was giving blessings to Maharaj. And said, and said, please come to my nunnery and visit. <laughs> As they, actually, they give trouble in, in, uh, we're in Poland sometimes, the, the Christian priests. And so, um, yeah, this is, these are examples of... Uh, Vaishishiko also has in his book an example. There was... Uh, yeah, anyway, I, if I don't know if I can remember it. One Christian couple, he wanted to distribute a book to them. And they said, no, no, we're Christians. We only read our books. And uh, so then Mara said, OK, well, I respect that. And I'm so happy that you are following your religion. And he encouraged them. And um, he went to distribute books to other people. And those, meanwhile, the couple was watching. And they saw Maharaj, how nice he was and how well behaved. And they came to him and they said, oh, we would like to give you a donation. We think you are doing nicely. And Mara said, well, I can't take your money unless you take a book. <laughs> so <laughs> he distributed a book to them. Uh, so yeah, it, it, by our behavior, other people can be changed. They can change their idea. Even if they act with us, toward, towards us with envy, we can change it to good behavior. So we have one minute left if there's any more questions. No? Okay. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Shana.